Communications with Dr. Ethan Kreisworth and Toki Nakazawa. Uh, you know, in athletic training, joint dislocations have been kind of a taboo subject and whether we should be doing them or not. So I wanted to have uh, Toki on, who's ha uh, created a company that creates joint relocation simulations. And then Dr. Ethan Kreisworth, who is sometimes the master at relocating joints with his company, Black Belt Sports Medicine. <laughs> uh, so welcome to the podcast. Uh, as I mentioned, Dr. Ethan Kreisworth, he's in Southern California and he's the owner of Black Belt Sports Medicine, which contracts with different jujitsu events and provides athletic training. Toki is in Texas, and he's the owner of MN Medical, specializing in creating and supplying medical simulation products to improve individual performance and the entire profession of sports medicine. So, Toki, what inspired you to create this joint relocation simulators? So, uh, you know, I was the rookie one point, and I had actual reduction, and I had to do on my own. And I was actually I was glad because there was a doctor. There was no doctor on site and there was like a away game and that kind of situation forced me to do it because if there was a doctor on site doctor would do it so i lose my opportunity but that happened and it's like they got through something to practice reduction technique you know like a cpr mannequin it's it's a medical simulation product so you got to be something for sports medicine also couldn't find it so one day i was a little tipsy and it's like you know what i'm gonna make my own <laughs> so that was that was the start <laughs> yeah so and then uh you know i went to uh so many places like you know lowe's and home depot and you, i got like 50 different springs uh, my product is low tech and it's just i use wire and spring to recreate the tension so i got like 50 really, really 50 different kind of springs i mean try so many so but uh, yeah, I made it, you know, the shoulder model was created in 2013 and then uh, uh, three years ago, elbow model and then uh, two years ago, finger model. And I'm working on hip dislocation simulator right now. And after that, I'm going to TMJ and also ankle model with uh, pulse function. So very cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. That's a great idea. The, the, the subject of uh, what you're doing now, you, you saw a gap and you utilized and you took advantage of the gap because I totally agree with you. Um, you know, there is no practice practices on the human. Exactly. Uh, when you get the chance to actually practice, if you're not fearful of any type of reprisal that may come through litigation. So it's, it's a great opportunity. So I commend you on uh, the product. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, the, any basically just, there's no, you know, confident, just fear and hesitation because you never practiced. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to reverse that. So, and it's working, you know, the athletic training program, the KD standard study 2020, they had to teach reduction technique all of a sudden, which is like, all right, you know, I have been reducing it for 20 years. Finally, they're catching up. That, that's great. Yeah. So, and you know, AT program is my, you know, target, uh, but now I'm sending to medical schools. Actually, this morning I had a the chat with the, the medical doctors and uh, the doctor medical school in New York and, they asked my advice and, you know, it's, and also I saw to actually the nursing program, uh, some nursing program student, they're going to the nurse practitioner and also they're going to decide to go to the, uh, like auto clinic. So they purchased my model, which I kind of surprised, but like, you know, there's no risk here. So why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Ethan, so with as many joint relocations that we've seen on the mats, when you became certified, did you start relocating right off the bat or did it take you a while to get comfortable with it? Yeah, was, you know, when you invited me to the podcast, I tried to remember my first uh, reduction and I can't remember. Um, but I do remember this. When I was a, a student at Cal State Dominguez Hills, we did our rotations with an ortho through the, um, through the School of Health and through uh, rotations at the health center. And that orthopedic surgeon, this was... Um, 91 or 92 so a long time ago and he said ethan would you reduce a shoulder if you had an opportunity i said no way he said why i said because we're not taught to uh we don't know how um we're fearful of it we're told not to i mean even 
I'm lecturing on the shoulder right now in a class I teach in sports med, and even says in bold letters in the in the uh, PowerPoint, do not attempt a reduction or or relocation of a joint. And I'm teaching dislocations, which is crazy to me. So I totally agree with Toki right there. Um, I can't remember when, but this was pediatric surge, and the only one basically pushed that Ethan, if you have an opportunity, they're going to sit in the ER for 90 minutes to two hours, or they're going to be transported. It's going to take forever. So there's compromise, potentially vascular, vascular compromise or neurological compromise. Then why wouldn't you attempt? So he put that in my head early on as a student. So when I did get the opportunity, and I'm sure it was jujitsu that I attempted a shoulder because shoulders just want to reduce by themselves. There's so much negative capsular pressure that these joints just want to go in. And since we're on the mat, Shelby, so quickly, you're talking 10, 20 seconds. These things, sometimes they just even self-reduce. I mean, a little bit of traction in a, you know, uh, the most loose pack position, if you know those per joint, they want to go back in and I call it negative pressure. So as I teach these students, um, I'm big on that idea. So I'm sure my first opportunity was the shoulder uh, if not a finger. And then, you know, I got euphoric on that, just like I get euphoric on suturing people. I've, I've pushed athletic training envelopes with a suturing idea. Uh, so, you know, are we allowed? When are we allowed? Now, Katie Sanders are allowing us to teach these production techniques, allowing us to teach these suture techniques. When can we actually implement them, right? And that's our biggest issue. Like, if you're going to teach us or allow us to be taught this information, we should be able to implement this information. So people are still scared. As you know, Shelby, we have a lot of students and uh, or you have a lot of certifies. Even doctors who come to our events uh, are a little bit hesitant. And we saw at the last world, some doctors just they don't have the practical skills yet, even though they're MDs or chiros or high level practitioners, because they just haven't seen them as much. So, uh, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I, I always say, if you feel crepitus, stop. If you don't feel crepitus, you feel a lot of tension, keep going. And that's really my go-to right there. Well, do we know how doctors in the ER or orthopedics, how do they get their reps on relocating joints? I guess, does anybody know? <laughs> well, they, they usually send those, uh, you know, to the football games, you know, high school football games, and hopefully they get to see it and hopefully they get to practice, but still, you know, it's a hit or miss, not a hundred percent, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I was on the social media. I, you know, uh, I, when I market my product, you know, you don't need to send the resident to the football game anymore. Just, you can teach them in the classroom. Sounds like, what do you mean? You know? So, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say it is hard talk. Uh, is it Toki? Toki. Toki. Yes. Yes. Toki. Toki. Yeah. yeah, it is hard, right? I think just like you made a really good um, example of, you know, the CPR mannequin, right? So doing CPR on the CPR mannequin, it's a great way to practice when it's live and you have a human, man, it's a whole nother level. Yeah. Yes. But I do think it's a great idea to get your hands on and feel tension. And, you know, it's just it's just scaffolding. So we scaffold the next level of getting your hands on something that you actually can apply. And the next level is trying it on you know, a human being, which is, gonna, you know, we have a lot of psychosocial factors involved in that, too. Right. So um, I would say one of the few joints I haven't reduced yet would be a hip. Um, so that'd be a, a fun practice. Yeah, hip. I have a hip coming up in hopefully three months in the, on the market. So, yeah, yes. well, I will come up and I will let you play with it. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> we did. We have uh, had um, multiple mandibular dislocations uh, from jujitsu. So I've had my hands yeah. on, um, of course, ankle, uh, toes, patella, um, shoulder, elbow. I elbow is the one I see, you know, when I read some articles and now I think you, you have more elbow dislocation from jujitsu. I mean, it's jujitsu tournament every weekend. I mean, school's popping out like crazy in San Antonio right now. So, you know, yeah. which is good for the trainer or a healthcare provider to practice actually, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just your, your standard food mechanisms. I think they just do just about everything. So yeah. uh, that's what we see. But yeah, when you have a screaming patient with screaming fans and everything else, it's definitely a lot of pressure. And we saw one just recently, and Shelby knows this. She was there. We were in Vegas at uh, Master Worlds, and we had one that just would not reduce. It took three of us to reduce it. Three elbow? of us. Elbow. Is this the one I mixed? What's that? 
Yeah, I think that was the one where we were all okay. pulling on it. <laughs> and it yeah. finally went. I mixed, and the doctor's I, trying I, to That was the YouTube video. <laughs> and I, I, I mixed it. I put my, my reduction practice one on the. Oh, that's right. the... Yeah, you're right. That's right. right? Yeah, we, okay. We had me hanging on it. And yeah. I put fulcrum underneath his, uh, that person's elbow, the patient's elbow. Um, and then we had an MD pushing direct pressure down on the electronon posterior dislocation. And then we had two people hanging on the distal forearm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that took everything. So imagine, so, and here's the thing is we're trying to reduce, we have people yelling at us over the stands, like stop that, try harder, you know, every <laughs> medical doctor, right? And then when we post, Toki, Toki, when we post, then you see the plethora of people saying, what are you doing? Great job. This is horrible. You guys are doing wonderful. So you really have to like take a step back and say, All okay, right. I open myself up to criticism here. I put it out there. You know, is that good or is that bad? Well, I don't know. It depends yeah, on who. I mean, you know, yeah. same thing. It's just you don't do X-ray and reduce. I work for high school. I don't have an X-ray vision. Well, I'm, <laughs> I might have it now, but you know, it's like You're... you reduce it without X-ray. That's crazy. You should send it to the ER. It's like no. Sure. I will use my educational, you know, knowledge and then do the steps. And then if you like, when you say. You know, you don't feel feel creepiest and then just mm -hmm. do it. You know, the, the age I hate, do not like is 13, 14 years old football player come off the field holding the show. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. You yeah. know, but other than that, I reduce. I would say, too, that um, I had my hands on a few number of broken um, ulnar radius. And when I tried to relocate, I just felt so much crepitus yeah. uh, of wrists. Uh, one was a, uh, a elbow and one was a shoulder and all came back as, as a, uh, one was a humerus with a spinal fracture. The other one was a green stick fracture and the wrist was, uh, just a commendative fracture. Oh, so, I, but I felt, and that was the difference. That's when I said, aha, okay, I am feeling and hearing crepitus, yeah. but hands off right away, splint, refer. And I would right. say too, because anytime we try to reduce, um, and this is for Shelby's viewers, you know, we always want to refer to them, you know, make sure everything clears out with the, with their x-ray and they have good proper sensory motor and uh, neurological control. So, yeah. Well, yeah. cause that's where we see at the jujitsu events is usually they don't have insurance first off they're international. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, making them as comfortable as possible. And then they kind of have to make the decision after that we give them all the red flags of, you know, if your hand starts going numb, if it goes cold, you know, all you can do is educate them at that point. Because, I mean, even if you send somebody splinted up with a dislocation, who knows if they're going to go to a good, or if they're even really going to go to the doctor and get it relocated sometimes. Yeah. And I would say, you know, if they're, if they're going to an ER a clinic and they're not triaged because they're in the LOC times four and they're not shocky, then they're going to sit in the ER. They're just gonna yeah. stay. Three, They're yeah. stable. Three full hours. Yeah, they're gonna stay, and then finally, uh, then it's time to see. Oh, you had to call the anesthesiologist. Yeah. And then you know, and then okay, then you get the bill a week later. Oh, it's out of network anesthesiologist. Actually, yeah. they they are on the network on purpose so they can bill whatever they want. That happens all the time. Yeah. You so know? that goes to Shelby's question is, you know, when are we gonna say it's okay to try to reduce, right? within our, within our plastic acts. So that's really, really hard. It's a big question. And I, I don't know the answer, but it's a very big question. And I think most people now, I would say, you know, uh, athletic trainers who've had a number of years under the belt are probably reducing fingers and shoulders. They may not be reducing mandibles and ankles, you know, maybe patellas, but you know, you know, we, the, the thing about athletic training and, and the stuff that we do talking is just, you know, we have massive volume. You know, massive volume. And then we always say, it's like, you know, we talk to Shelby. I said, we need MDs here. MDs will get more reps at jiu-jitsu tournaments than they will at 12 weeks, 14 weeks of football. Oh, yeah. They will, you know, yeah. so. so that, I mean, when I see, you know, athletic trainers, high school setting, if they work, they manage or survive five years, I would say you'd be fine. You can be alone. You can cover anything and you'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but Sam, if your first year, second year, you know, just they don't have enough reps, so you know they're not confident. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, do you guys see any misconceptions out there about the relocations? Obviously, people are are scared, 
Yeah. But what are some well, of the myths out there? Some, when I go to the conference, you know, some say, well, my state does not allow me to do it, which that's fine that I get that. But some say, well, my doctor said, you know, because of nerve damage, I'm not doing it. Because you're an athletic trainer, we work under the doctor, so we can't do it. I get that. But, you know, nerve damage to me is like, what about it? Okay, shoulder 11 to 30 percent, axillary nerve damage possible. But if you know it, if you, if you they cannot raise the arm, documentation and reduce it. Same thing as elbow. Okay, if you notice there's nerve damage, okay, documentation, use your phone, record a conversation, protect yourself, and reduce it because it needs to be reduced. Sooner reduce, it's easier. Sooner reduce, patients suffer less pain. Sooner reduce, faster recovery. But people, they don't see that. Well, I'm, I, you know, I look, you know, my doctor said I can't do it. It's like, no, no, you know. So I don't, I don't argue with them. Okay, I understand that. You know, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, I don't know the data as far as neurovascular compromise because that's the biggest red flag is neurovascular compromise. You're going to put them in a worse state than they're already in. But I don't know the data. Like, and I haven't seen any massive data popping up in front of my face saying that. This person suffered, you know, lack of motor, lack of feeling, you know, poor blood flow issues related to a reduction done by an athletic trainer. So I don't know the risk, but then again, I don't know the data deep enough. I would say, you know, we have a lot of people out there reducing, you know, in the means the uh, on the field play. We have a lot of people doing, uh, you know, grade five manips with with little risk, uh, you know, so mm, I don't see a massive risk, but maybe I'm speaking too forward without reading the data. But at the same time, you know, I, I get that. When I was, you know, a freshman trainer, I was scared to death to do it because she, what, what if I get sued? I got, I, I, I got no experience. I got nothing to say. You know, I'm scared to death. So after five, six years, somebody, you know, trying to come after me, it's like, you know, I told you, I have a conversation with you, you know, said, you know, you couldn't raise your arm. You know, there's a nerve damage before the reduction, the dislocation caused the damage. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, you know, so, I mean, it's there people, unfortunately, they're trying to come after you because you got money and they trying to, you know, but it's, it's something you can't avoid. It happens. I think to, to get to the, the truth, we need to basically uh, demonstrate, right, that we can reduce, you know, multiple joints an entire year with no major risk, you know, and then we can say, okay, look, here's our numbers, here's our data, and say we can move forward in, in attempting to reduce if you're in these settings, right? That's what I think that would be the next step. Yeah. Well, I know like when we have new staff come in and we talk about relocations and if they're comfortable, some people are like, oh yeah, I can do it except for this joint, this joint, this joint. Right. <laughs> what are those, what are your thoughts around the most difficult joints, I guess, that people consider most likely the hip and you know, the elbow probably, uh, what are, what are those fears, I guess, that you guys see? Yeah, personally, I don't, I think all joints, like I said before, they all want to reduce, right? Cause there's capsular negative pressure. They want to reduce. Mm-hmm. So then we have to think about in what position is the joint. So an anterior inferior shoulder dislocation is going to be a lot easier than a posterior dislocation. We don't see it though. We, it's just not a normal dislocation that we see in jiu-jitsu and wrestling maybe a posterior elbow dislocation maybe i get it i don't know the data but maybe football or car accident football because the way it changed the block there used to be you have to put your arm up and mm-hmm. then you if you got a huge body gap and you just dislocate yeah that's so that now that. it's this so it's, it's a little different technique they change so it's a little less but yeah that one yeah. of the, the things is alignment huge body gap and then just all of a sudden you get pushed down when the posterior dislocation yeah uh, so again so or still fuchsias, you know, falling out ideas. But I would think, again, athletic trainers are on the field or on the mat or on the court. So, you know, we're we're there within seconds. So the ability to relocate and just apply traction in a loose pack position of any joint, the the joint wants to go back in. It's not trying to reduce after 90 minutes, you know. So that's hard. Now we've had, had, you know, like just this elbow we had, which was a really hard one to reduce – they, they went into spasm quick, larger muscles, you know, a little harder to reduce. Was a big guy? Uh, I don't think he was a too big of a guy. I can't really recall. Okay. Uh, probably like medium. He wasn't as big as our big yeah. 
boys. <laughs> definitely joint female joints, less musculature, smaller frames have have definitely gone in a lot easier. Uh, just in my anecdotal evidence, but um, again, straight traction, no crepitus of any joint. Typically, it wants to go back in. Yeah, you just have to hang on. And the way I think about reductions is, I will hang on a joint. You know, so you just get this like reciprocal inhibition. You know, I'll hang on a joint for two minutes. You know, I've hung on a joint for five minutes before sweating my ass off you know me and chris just hanging one guy stabilizing the scap and me just hanging on a shoulder like all my body weight for minutes at a time like it's not going to go and finally it goes so and then some people you barely touch it and it just reduces right so it's right. like a right. so yeah it, well and that's where it was interesting after we had posted on instagram of that elbow relocation how many people were like well that's the wrong position or you know yeah. so many critiques and it's like well i mean in that moment you know, that's the position that we decided to choose and flipping them over wasn't going to be necessarily conducive to anything, you know, and moving them around. So I don't know. Everybody thinks they have the right answer, but they're not in that moment. <laughs> totally agree. And that, you know, I started changing for personally, I started changing it up a little bit with the elbow dislocation, laying them prone and putting the fulcrum underneath the uh, antecubital fossa. That seems to be the best method in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I, I have, like, we've had a lot of a lot of people comment on the position of the shoulder. You know, I go foot in the axilla. People say, oh, that's horrible. You're going to cause a brachial plexus injury, some axonal tamesis or whatever. And again, like, you know, we've been doing this for 20 years now. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, but it's no, no, not, nothing coming back at me, at least, you know, so. Yeah. Well, what about the ankle dislocations? How can you talk that through a little bit? Yeah, ankle dislocations are the easiest because they're just, you know, from what I learned from uh, another ortho, basically picking up the great toe will reduce a tailor a tailor dislocation, just straight traction of the of the great toe. Now, typically, I'll go out. We've had so many of those. I'll go out and just do like calcaneal and dorsum of the foot and just cause straight traction. And that ta man, nothing's really attached to that talus. Uh, dynamically, you know, there's no tendons attached to this, so nothing's really holding it other than ligamentous structures, but they're not, you know, neurologically engaged at that point. So it seems to go in pretty easy. We've had really good luck with ankle dislocations. They seem to want to go back really quickly. Yeah. yeah. Toki, have you made a simulator for the ankle yet? It's coming up. So next, 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 I mean, we are thinking about TMJ next or ankle joint with mm -hmm. the pulse function. So if dislocate, pulse missing, so we have to reduce it to get the pulse back on. So. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. So why? So let me ask you this question: Why uh, mandibular dislocations? You you think that's a common one? Well, so this is the thing. I, I made it because I was tipsy again, and I just I made it, and then <laughs> and then uh, you know I I uh, you know I I got some uh, d uh, dentist stock uh, friends, and then take it over there, and they say, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. And then I went to the military base. I have a, a, a base here. And then the doctor looked at it and said, you don't need to make one. It's like, so what do you mean? How are you going to reduce it? You don't need to reduce it. Use the gagging reflex. So what he said was use the Q-tip. Just rub back against your throat. The human body just, yeah, it's going to reduce it back. Like, wow. Really? It was like. Whoa. I, I never try. I don't know. I mean, if you've seen it, please let's try. I mean, let me know. You see, you see a lot. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. So, you know, we'll tell our staff. <laughs> yeah, it's seriously, a shallow joint, right? It's a very shallow fossa. Yeah. So I don't know. It might work. Sounds like I don't know. Wow. <laughs> you know, we get it because people tuck their chin and they yeah. get this a uh, yeah. choke, right? And they try to block it with their chin, so it just pops it right out. So I go in, thumbs in the mandible, which is probably, you know, dangerous because people can clinch down, but I'll glove up, go thumbs on the yeah. molar and just do straight like anterior drawer, distraction and anterior yeah. drawer. And I've had luck both times with that. Do you do face to face? Yeah, face to face. Okay. So the, the Japanese technique somehow, they go to the patient on the facing up, they go to the head side and put the hands from the top. And pull up? Pull, well, push down, you know. Push down and I mean, oh. pull, you got to push in a little bit and down and down. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
both times I went thumbs inside the the molars, my fingers like on the back of the angle of the mandible. Right. Okay. Pulled forward and it just it, again I felt it. It literally wants to pull right up. Right. 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 Yeah. Ooh, so and both cool. times like ah, oh, I feel so much better. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Don't don't range it. Right. Let me just like tape you shut. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there. So with young athletes with their growth plates that aren't fully uh, confused together, what is the youngest that you guys would do a relocation on, I guess, or does it matter? Cause would they still fracture that growth plate in the ER? Hmm. Well, Got like we talked previously, if when I, you know, when I put my hands on it, the shoulder one, if I, you know, ask them to rotate out a little bit, they feel, you know, cracking is like, mm, out go to the ER. That's yep. age 13, you know, the, uh, eighth grader football player or freshman uh, football player. That's the age I really do not like because if that really high possibility, that's the case. So. Yeah. I would go back to the same methodology. If you feel crepitus, it's a no go. Yeah. Uh, I did have a years ago. Um, I had a kid's tournament and a girl dislocated her shoulder. Uh, I reduced it and it kept on coming out right in front of my eyes. Wow. It would, in so either she's in some type of spasm with those tissues or the joint capsule is already torn or just stretched out or neurologically just not engaged but i would reduce her and literally just slip right out and that was true the first time dislocator i remember her very well wow yeah yeah that's the only one i've ever seen like that gotcha yeah. uh any difference? well there's some people that have a condition oh, what, yeah. do, what do you call the there's some people that have loose joint condition some kind of disease i, just, I don't oh, know yeah. Uh, yeah, people are really uh, Ehlers Daniels. Yes. Yeah. So, but. yeah that, that was, I didn't ask. I didn't know anything about Ehlers Daniels back then. I guess that's possible. Um, this was years ago. So yeah, yeah she could be hypermobile. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first time dislocators and chronic dislocators. Do you guys have any feedback on that? Uh, you know, second, third time. I mean, it's surgical. I mean, I hate to say it, but. Yeah, I mean, some people, let's say, uh, you know, Otani, he's sublux, which he's the pitcher and he can throw pretty fastball, which means he's got MDI. So I assume he'll be fine. But some people, you know, the same uh, subluxation might be the end of the career. So, okay, he'll be great. You know why? Well, you know why she'll be great? Why? Because he's a right handed pitcher. <laughs> he's a left-handed batter and a right-handed pitcher right, we don't that's right that. that's right yeah uh but i would say that um uh, shelby had sent you that that to post on black belt that um muay thai fighter who reduced yeah. with the uh with the ring he basically he went up to the ring rope and put his ring rope underneath there great idea fulcrum and then he squeezed down and it just relocated yeah obviously he's a chronic dislocator otherwise right, he would right, right. do that yeah, um, I see some guys, they put like a, a, some kind of bottle or something and just, you know, I, I, I yeah, I had one of the YouTube video. I have a, you did the technique. I put my arm underneath and then said, yeah, that works. Here. It, I used to do it. I did a towel roll ah. and I towel roll and then I just pushed down on the humerus. But I, what I didn't like about that, it just applies so much torque to the humerus, pushing down on the elbow with that, you know, I just felt like it was so much torque mm. and a bit more painful. And then I started moving to this more axillary right, right, right. Uh, pressure I do. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So for younger athletic trainers, obviously, Toki, you have a simulator, but do you have any other ways to practice relocation? Well, I mean, I, so that's the thing. I mean, now the, a lot of, you, they have to teach. Mm -hmm. But the, all those clinical professors, they graduate from all KD standards. So they don't know, you know, they didn't learn. So yeah. they buy it and it's like, well, and then that one we want to teach, but we don't know how, you know. So it's like, okay, we can do workshop. I do that, you know. So yeah. the strange thing is if you buy my product, they have to learn how to dislocate the joint on purpose. <laughs> Interesting. So like, yeah. So, you know, my elbow model. So you have to dislocate, right? And then you have to reduce. So it's like, huh? So I show the elbow model again. Uh, elbow model. 
Cool. So he's dislocated right now, right? He's dislocated. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, just sit in position, maybe, and then push and pull in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then how do you how do you dislocate him? And just little turn. Okay, you rotate him. You rotate him. Dislocate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yep. Right. Great product. Great idea. And I I love it again because you're uh, you're answering a question, you know. And the question is, when are we going to have an opportunity? We watch all these videos of other people do it, but you never get our hands on anybody to do it, you know. Because even if we did, somebody would probably take over. You know, they get scared. I do yeah. that too on my own athletic trainers who we hire. I get worried. I'm like, uh, you, no, I, I got to do it. And I jump in. I and know. that's mine. Huge fault of mine. But, um, you know, I love the idea here. Great. Yeah, so, yeah, now I do, you know, I, that's my main thing is now is a workshop. I'm not, you know, I, I don't sell my product anymore. Just got too busy. And there's a company took over my sales part of it. So just I can focus on workshop. So I uh, do nothing but workshop and go to places, go conference. And so. Great idea. Cool. Uh, great idea. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, what's the craziest dislocation that you've seen or had to deal with? Oh, we had a, uh, years ago at PANS, we had a tibiofemoral dislocation and that's a rarity. Um, it was a female semifinal fight in Irvine and her tibia was completely pulled forward and it was like tinting the skin really, really bad. Her patella was relocated, so it must have been stretching the heck out of the patella tendon. Obviously, her cruciate ligaments are probably gone. Yeah. Uh, so I had her on her back, hip at 90, knee at 90, and I straddled her lower leg. I squeezed her lower leg and I pulled it. So I had my hands on her like hamstrings. And I pulled with my body and I pushed posteriorly and it went back in. Does that make wow. sense? Yeah. <laughs> she ranged her knee. I did her just basically sagittal plane ranging. Uh, then I just did kind of like a little meniscal ranging. And she goes, I want to go. I go, there's no way you're going <laughs> to <Yeah. laughs> So, but here Whoa. we go. Uh, she went, she played half guard right away and she stopped right away. So I gave her the opportunity because it wasn't a concussion or a neck injury, but her right, right. Oh, Yeah. So that was probably the gnarliest one. The, the ones that look really, really bad, like patella dislocations to the crowd, the ankle dislocation with um, uh, with one of our big fighters we had years ago looked really, really bad. Uh, so I think, you know, visually, some of these look really, really bad, but they're not hard to relocate or reduce, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so legalities... I mean, I know California is a little different, so I'm sure, Ethan, you have, well, you have Dr. Elmo, I guess, who oversees you, but obviously for legality reasons, having a supervising physician, you know, talk to them about it and talk about the risks, Re reviewing pertinent employee-related documents when you're looking to relocate, and then written standing orders, and then checking that your malpractice insurance coverage is going to, you know, cover you in this these situations mm -hmm. but um any other problems that you guys see with dislocations that people should be aware of scary parents <laughs> true Parents are like my biggest fear and that's why working kids events are really hard for me now um parents are just they could just turn on you and athletes can turn on you too really really quickly athletes either love you or you're the villain and parents are the same way they either love you or now you are the villain so i i'm more scared of the parents and you know them wanting to be litigious than i am about anything else i think yeah anything from you toki <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, like like I mentioned about protect myself, protect yourself. That's the that's the thing you can do. You know, that's and even though, like I said, people can come after you. So, yeah, you know, I hate to say it, but yeah, yeah. I think that's that's, that's everything in outside of training, right? We're we're either completely loved or you know we don't get a lot of recognition for all the great things we do with athletes and you know the the tenure that we do with uh, some of these teams. But when you do one thing wrong or they think you're wrong, then, you know, it's let's blast you all over social media. Let's blast you to the, the public. Let's blast you to everything, you know, to the, um, 
professional standards. So it, it's really, really hard. But I just think that athletic training should have a little bit more, you know, leeway to start some of these things that we see so much, you know, to to waste resources and call it paramedics, waste resources in the ER, you know, for some basic uh, medical things that we could do. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, yeah. but it, and like you also say, you know, it's a process now, you know, the, all that player training program, they have to teach you the action technique and, you know, they start teaching it and then hopefully, you know, they learn. And so when they see the first one and then they get to, do actual reduction instead of like you say instead of going to the emergency room and okay they you know get reduced right away and all they have to do is next day get an x-ray ap lateral start doing the rehab right away and they still all you know full five months full five weeks out maybe two weeks you might be able to play you know end of the senior year you know that that's that's a great outcome to me so hopefully hopefully get to that point yeah yeah well, and I think even just the traumatic situation, you know, being able to quickly get them out of pain instead of, you know, the one at uh, JJ Con this year, she was sitting on our table for 45 minutes before the ambulance came and she was in a lot of pain. Like mm-hmm. her partner was about to kick our asses, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, yeah. And then I don't know how long it took her to get to the ER and how long it took to actually get reduced. But yeah, we just... That one was a tough one, and I think we should have probably tried again, but everybody was not giving up, but it just was so difficult, and we well, spent a lot of time on that one, too. Yeah, I, you're talking about the girl with the hip? Oh, no, yeah. the girl with the elbow that we sent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's, again, it's patient by patient. When you're getting so much resistance through, you know, verbal and physical uh, information, mm-hmm. really hard, you know? It's really, really hard, and you know, here we are hanging on these elbows and there's, you know, could be screaming, you know, either here or in the ER, you know, or do they, have, you know, because of that's so visual for everyone around us, because we're not behind a tent, you know, uh, it's like, okay, when do I stop? You know, and I am, I am going to stop because you visibly and, and emotionally, you know, don't want this treatment. So now you're going to wait 90 minutes or more to the ER. Yes, you will be anesthetized, you know, yeah. but how, you know, to what, to what end did we apply, you know, so much tissue tension that now you're going to have, you know, irresolvable problems for a long time, you know? So yeah. it's a hard go between, you know? So I think we try multiple times and try effectively, not just, oh, I tried, like really, really try. And then, okay, then we got to let it go. Yeah. That's what we go. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I ate, I, ate up on my table that I didn't get a chance to reduce. It yeah. really hurt. Like we're pretty <laughs> just about everybody so to me it's like oh come on <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i you know it's football now these days they have a tent you know just it's everything is covered now these days to protect their you know so yeah you know, they, you're right, you're right. yeah we have the difference huge difference no you're totally right we haven't done that in athletic training yet but um uh maybe it's coming you know Maybe it's coming. We do try to like for the suturing stuff and for other stuff, maybe if they have to, uh, you know, degown, you know, maybe we take them and there's been like media tents we've used for that. But yeah. as far as a little pop up tent and just you got to put the little cover around it, you know, just, yeah. you know, just protect the views and like, yep. like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, anything else on dislocations that you guys want to give your two cents on? Mm. Try. Well, and also it's it's like he said it's a judgment call you know people say so you reduce everything no i mean if you don't comfortable don't do it there's nothing wrong with that mm-hmm. you know and then people say so you recommend you encourage people to reduce this look at the joint i don't I, i'm not a doctor but i have a doctor back me up so that's why i do it and mm-hmm. you a lot of trainers they don't do it because they don't have that connection they don't have the support so that's why they can't do it they don't do it yeah, you know, like a so how are you going to build that? So it takes time and you go to the doctor's office, you have to, you know, ask questions. You have to show what you know, what you don't know. You know, they're trying to build a relationship. Then they will trust you. I mean, I don't know where you came up and they don't think I know you. They don't trust you. You have to yeah. build. You mm-hmm. know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I always try to tell people too. I think I did a, an EMT uh, certification in my very, very early years of athletic training, I found it so helpful oh, yeah. because there's so much trauma on EMT and the rotations you do either on the rig 
or we're in the ER. I think I spent like a week in the ER. I saw so much stuff that I would never see as an athletic trainer. And then it just builds confidence because you're there and you do that, right? Athletic training, some trauma, you know, comes, but it doesn't come sometimes as much as you see like in the ER. So I always advise people, hey, do your EMT rotation. It's a great way to evaluate too. They have a different evaluation system. I think it's really great. Um, so I always try to advise people to do that, new and up and coming students. Yeah. Well, that's where I always encourage uh, athletic trainers and students to come out for our jujitsu events because you get more reps in two days than yeah. an eight week rotation sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to run through some facts from a study. So 2021, oh. there was a survey of 772 athletic trainers and 46.5% received training from their KD accredited school. Don't know what that training was. <laughs> well, that's the, that was the problem though. They say you had to teach, but they, say, yeah. they didn't say how. No so some program, they showed the YouTube video, we're done. But you know, <laughs> it, it was seriously, and some they purchased my model and then, you know, it's like, can we come for workshop? Yeah, I do that. But Sam's like, no, we showed a YouTube video. That was it. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, 64% were trained by a physician, 90% of those athletic trainers relocated with or without a physician, and 10% had not relocated a dis dislocation at all. So kind of crazy. I mean, I feel like there's this perception that everybody's uncomfortable, but if 90% of athletic trainers are relocating, you know, I think uh, it's not as taboo as we think it is. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe in a, I'm teaching, uh, gosh, what book am I using? I won't quote the book, actually, um, the text, but in bold letters within the shoulder chapter, it says, do not attempt to reduce injury. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's still being taught, at least through textbooks, uh, current textbooks, don't reduce, you know, yeah. but that, that's good uh, info, Shelby. That's yeah. good. To that's right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what trends are you guys excited about in athletic training coming up? Tokyo, I'll let you go first. Well, the... Medical simulation is extremely, extremely huge. Uh, you know, I, I when I made this my model, I didn't know anything about it, but this called IMSH. It's huge, huge, and more products coming up. And you know, any field people use medical. I mean, simulation, and I think we have we're gonna have more you know medical simulation product for athletic training. And also, to me, every profession is. I don't know if evolving is the proper word or not, but you know, now we got to teach that you got to do suture. We got to do IV, which I'm not comfortable IV, to be honest with you, but you know, it's, you got to do more and more. And so it's going to be interesting. You might be able to, you know, have to carry portable uh, uh, ultrasound machine and we take it, they send it to the doctors, reduce it. You know, it might happen now, you know, we have, Pretty much now these days, every AT has the AED. You know, we didn't have it. I didn't have it when I started. So, you know, so, yeah, yeah technology. <laughs> Ethan, what about you? Yeah, you know, I've been really high on suturing, you know, just because with, within our uh, job position, we see a lot of lacks, you know. So I think the ability to uh, close a wound via simple suturing is great, you know, or stapling. Um you know, we save people a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of uh, stress and frustration. And if we understand wound care, I think we can really advise on good advice and and do the job. You know, and if we're if they're teaching it, then we need to start implementing it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Uh, if you guys could foresee the future, where do you see sports medicine in the next five to ten years? Uh. We're going to see more. I mean, you know, when I started off my prof this profession, there was nothing. I mean, you couldn't, there was nothing, no job for Amazon. I mean, now we have, a, you know, or auto industry that's a safe, safety specialist. Mm -hmm. So it's going. I mean, hopefully maybe 10, 15 years, we might see athletic trainer up in the space. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know. So you're talking as far as, as far as a, uh... Job careers, or you talking? As, yeah, as a job, yeah. You know, we, no, we just yeah, yeah. I'm asking, like, I'm even asking Shelby because I feel like everything is like you know wearables and data collection. You know, with yeah. the an aura ring, a whoop strap, um, everything is wearables. Everything is data collection. More data, 
more data, more data. We don't know what to do with half the data, but you know, we're collecting data. We love to collect data. So where can that data take us? What will AI be for sports medicine in the future? What does that mean for our jobs? You know, I just think everything is tech. Everything's data. I mean, Toki, you're doing tech, right? It's low tech. Mm, it's a low tech. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, technology. It's not computerized. You're going to add to this. You know, soon you'll you'll be able to have some type of, you know, wearable accelerometer on there. At what joint uh, force? At what speed? At what velocity? You're actually reducing. You know, as somebody, you know, maybe somebody buys your product and uh, you know on it. But, Tech is everything. So yeah, I, the University of uh, Ohio, they do the kind of research. You know how much force you need to do, in which direction, how much external rotation you need. So this yeah, is- that can be done with accel- accelerometers and everything is already in tech today. But you know we have a lot of tech in, in helmets, football helmets, because the velocity hits, high velocity hits. Uh, so that's where I see sports medicine and with the adventation of AI. You know what is that going to do for us? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that with all this uh, scope of practice of the relocations, the sutures, IVs, that we are going to be able to break away from physician oversight. I think we'll be almost as close as PAs. I'm not sure what's going to differentiate differentiate us other than school. But I mean, I can see us running our own clinics and, you know, having more autonomy with having private clients and being mm-hmm. able to provide public health care ultimately that's where i'm kind of seeing it with yeah they're incorporating yeah to add on that i mean really just like pt they have specialties right so they have a mm-hmm. in orthopedics or specialties and things athletic trainers have been trying that they're trying with education but there should be a specialty in emergency medicine or a specialty in you know and we are orthopedics but they tried the orthopedics but there should be extreme specialties based on the number of years. So if you have eight years of experience, then you can apply for the specialty and get certified in the specialty, then you can do these practices. Because I still think, you know, like Toki said, zero to five years, zero to three years, that athletic trainer, I wouldn't, you know, unless they're great, I'd be pretty worried, you know? Yeah, I want to trust them, you know? It's like, yeah. I want to trust them. We know how much, we know Katie programs, right? We both uh, work for Katie programs. So you know how much information these kids need to retain and to specialize in that, that's a whole nother level. So you can yeah. introduce and they can be a little bit familiar, but to master, mm-mm. the master is going to come with extreme redundancy, which, you know, black belt sports medicine would give them. That's extreme redundancy. You will see more ACLs at a black belt sports medicine event than you will probably like, like we said in the whole, you know, uh, semester of football, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it's you know uh, there's a Saturday morning clinic in San Antonio. There's a, uh, one of the sports clinic. They do Saturday morning clinic, and it's packed. You know, the, to me, that's the best place to learn. And <laughs> I I go there since '93, and I learned so much. But you know, I see a lot of young ones. They they don't say, "Well, we don't have time. Like, we don't need to go." So, mm-hmm. That's your call. I Meaning, I want to improve myself. So I mean, as yeah. much as like, I can do it, but. Yeah, it, it's hard. Some, you know, everybody's got a different work ethic. You know, some people put 40 hours. Oh, it's too much. Some people, they put 80 is nothing. So, right. You know, it's, it's hard. But, right. Yeah. Well, that's where I've always wondered about redundancies on the sideline of why do we have an orthopedic doctor? Why don't we have like a neurologist or, you know, a ER doctor who can help with the trauma stuff that really do need more hands? I don't know what an orthopedic sometimes is helping me with when I've already had me check it, the assistant check it, and then the orthopedic's going to check it. I don't know what more information they're going to get at that point. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Plus like first year, first year resident come in, they check in ACL like crazy. It's, it's torn. Just leave, <laughs> leave them alone. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, I don't know. It's like, I know. Just don't touch. <laughs> but so great about, uh, you know, acute, medical care and athletic training is, you know, we don't have, we have the luxury of not having that golden period. We're able to check an ACL, PCL, torn patellar tendons right there in front of you. And then there's no guarding, you know, you're going to actually see it, you know, it's like being under anesthesia. You see it right away, you know, whereas if they wait for, you know, Monday's clinic, they're completely guarded, swollen and mushy. So you can't feel that. Yeah. Can't feel it. Can't feel it. So, you know, I think having the MD there is, cool for validation it's cool for triangulation of the information which is you know good and it's just good to 
you know, we still have to look at the pecking order and the MD is still, you know, holds the, holds the glass of wine over us, you know, so, yeah. so to speak. Definitely. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I think we hit that on the head. I think we're <laughs> good with dislocations. Everybody should be doing them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give it a couple tries. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much. Uh, Toki, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, how do they contact you? Uh, Toki at mn that's medical.com, my, uh, my email, uh, they can contact me for workshop requests. Uh, if you know, they want to purchase that uh, also, they can send me an email, but I will refer to my distributor. So. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. And Ethan, if anybody wanted to get in contact with you, how's the best way? Uh, you can reach me at black belt sports medicine. Sounds exactly that one word, black belt sports medicine at gmail.com or you can reach my Instagram at, at, dr dot k r e that'll be dr christworth we also have a uh instagram site called uh at black belt sports medicine as well instagram perfect you do oh. workshop for to i guess for the people the staff member right once a year we should be you know that's something oh. we have, we have a list of things that we want to do and <laughs> you know, we're two parts across the world here and across the country you know we we all have multiple jobs and we're trying to we have a list, but yeah. we could, if it's something that, you know, you think that we, you can help us with or we can do together, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. You know, you also, I mean, easiest one. I mean, if there's no hands-on, make a video out of it. Yeah. You know? well, yeah. We're hoping to do an online course, hopefully 2025 is the year, but we just have to figure out the filming and finalize the curriculum. So we might have to get some video of you relocating with the, simulators yeah. and add that in there yeah, yeah i'm trying to have an online course also then people you know they want to do actual hands-on so i mean it's, I'm, I'm working on a uh, workshop uh, uh online course now too so that's Perfect. cool well listeners be on the lookout <laughs> more <laughs> educational opportunities yep. so well thank you so much and this is to the bone cool thank you thank you okay now i just have to wait for it to upload and then we should be good Cool. Ooh. Thanks, Shelby, for setting it up. Good. And great to yeah. meet you. Thank you. Yeah. I think can I get the copy of this? Yeah. Uh, can I put it on my YouTube channel?